We've talked a lot before about different types of pathogens, such as viruses or bacteria, but today I want to talk about another type of pathogen, which is known as a parasite, which are organisms that live in or on another organism, known as the host, and they benefit from that interaction, and often cause the host harm. And I want to specifically talk about a type of parasite that infects more than 240 million people each year around the globe, and that's malaria. And malaria can actually be passed on from individual to individual, but not directly. It actually needs a vector in between. And you may remember from our Lyme disease series that there can be certain vectors like ticks that can pass on bacteria. In this case, the parasite is passed on through a vector known as a mosquito. And how it works is a mosquito may bite an infected individual and take up their blood. They now have that malaria parasite inside of them. The malaria parasite can actually live inside of the mosquito's saliva. So when the mosquito goes and infects a non-infected individual, they'll take up some of their blood, but at the same time pass on some of their saliva containing that malaria parasite. Now that malaria parasite is in, inside that individual and it will move to the liver where it will take some time to mature and this can even be up to one year. Once mature, the malaria parasite will leave the liver and enter red blood cells. And that's where an individual actually becomes the most infectious because now if another mosquito comes along and takes up some of their blood, they'll be infected with the malaria parasite and it can also occur through other non-common ways such as blood transfusions or the sharing of needles. But also, once one's red blood cells are infected, that's where the most amount of damage can occur. And it can even lead to the bursting of those red blood cells, leading to some of the more severe consequences of malaria, such as rapid breathing, rapid heart rate, and even fatigue. And if these go on for too long, this can lead to coma and possibly death. So if you're in an area or going to be in an area where malaria is common, make sure you stay connected with your primary care provider so you're up to date on the necessary precautions to take in order to avoid this type of infection.